Welcome to the UTEP Women's and Gender Studies Conference 2022, Bilingual Graphic Medicine, Visual Health Narratives for Alzheimer's Awareness, and today's March 22nd, 2022. My name is Elvira Carizal Dukes, and I do have my colleagues with me today, and they're each going to introduce themselves shortly. But first, as we begin, I just want to share the terminology that we're discussing in our presentation today. Ian Williams, he coined the term graphic medicine to denote the use of comics in medical education and patient care. Graphic medicine, our working definition is illustrated health and illness narrative. Today, we're focusing on our community partner, the Alzheimer's Association, West Texas chapter. There's also a conference and it's called graphic medicine and there's a website graphicmedicine.org and you can also follow the hashtag in case you're interested in learning more about the conversations around this topic this is a quote from the website graphic medicine it's a site that explores the interaction between the medium of comics and the discourse of healthcare we are a community of academics healthcare authors artists and fans of comics and medicine i'm an assistant professor of instruction for chicano studies at utep and i teach Chicano cinema, theater, and Latino music of the U.S. I'm also an author for comics. I write comics, and that's how I got involved as a volunteer. The other thing that brings me to this project is that I'm also a caregiver for my mother currently. When I was approached to do a workshop to help caregivers with stress relief and relaxation, I immediately could relate to that working on this project with my amazing colleagues. The objectives for this presentation, one, to bring awareness to facts and figures of Alzheimer's and other dementias, two, to discuss the journaling and doodling workshops, to introduce bilingual comics as graphic medicine for awareness and education, and to promote journaling and doodling for relaxation and stress reduction. So we welcome you to journal and doodle as you're following along in this panel presentation, anything that helps you to feel comfortable, and especially after a long day of going to all the different presentations during this conference. Before we begin with all the panelists, um, I just want to invite everyone to take a few deep breaths. So let's inhale deeply through your nose and exhale deeply through your mouth. And let's repeat this two more times. Breathe in, inhale deeply through your nose. Exhale deeply through your mouth. One more time, inhale deeply through your nose and exhale deeply through your mouth. So this is an almost immediate way to help you relax and feel a little bit less stressful. I know that now I feel even more at ease as we're doing this presentation, having breathed. And our workshops always begin or incorporate breathing exercises. Now I'm going to go ahead and toss this over to my colleague, the executive director of the Alzheimer's Association, West Texas chapter, David Hernandez. Hi, well, thank you for, for having me here as a panelist um, for this, this presentation. I'm very excited to work with my colleagues, Dr. Dukes, um, Dr. Martinez, Dr. Isela Mayer, Dr. Sarah Yvonne Jimenez, and my colleague, Director of Programs and Services, uh, Maria Llamas. I am the Executive Director for the West Texas Chapter, and our vision as an association um, is a world without Alzheimer's and all other dementia. You know, this is something that we strive to do in everything uh, in all of our pillars. Our mission, the Alzheimer's Association leads the way to end Alzheimer's and all other dementia by accelerating global research, driving risk reduction, and early detection and maximizing quality care and support. My connection to the association, to the disease is, um, you know, I was a caregiver and I have family members who have and who are living with dementia. Um, this is something that's very dear to my heart, you know, being a Latino in, in this um, borderplex community, um, I see so many um, friends, colleagues who are affected by this disease. It's, it's very dear to me and it is, you know, my personal goal is to really support our, our vision and mission of the association. Thank you so much, David. We'll go ahead and now go over to Maria Yamas and she's going to give us some facts and figures on Alzheimer's and other dementias. 
Hi everyone, my name is Maria Llamas and I am the Director of Programs and Services for the Alzheimer's Association, West Texas chapter. I'm not a caregiver, but I do have family members that are going through Alzheimer's, so that's, that's why this topic is starting to hit home. So it's very important for me to help provide more programs and services to our community. I'm going to go through some facts and figures with you all. The number of Americans living with Alzheimer's is growing and it's growing very fast. More than 6 million Americans of all ages have Alzheimer's and our source is the Alzheimer's website that you all can go to. An estimated 6.5 million Americans age 65 and older are living with Alzheimer's this year. 73% are age 75 or older. About one in nine age 65 and older, which is 10.7% have Alzheimer's. Almost two thirds of Americans with Alzheimer's are women. Approximately two thirds of caregivers are women. More specifically, over one third of dementia caregivers are daughters. And as the number of older Americans grows rapidly, so too will the number of new and existing cases of Alzheimer's. By 2050, the number of people age 65 and older with Alzheimer's may grow to a projected 12.7 million, bearing the development of medical breakthroughs to prevent, slow, or cure Alzheimer's disease. Older Black Americans are about twice as likely to have Alzheimer's or other dementias compared to older whites. Older Hispanics are about one and a half times as likely to have Alzheimer's or other dementias compared to older whites. There is a lack of culturally relevant educational materials available for these populations. And to address this disparity, a collaboration was initiated between the Alzheimer's Association West Texas Chapter the University of Texas at El Paso or UTEP and Duke's Comics to produce a series of virtual workshops entitled Journaling and Doodling for Stress Reduction and Relaxation for Caregivers of Alzheimer's Patients. These sessions were live streamed starting during the COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you so much, Maria. So now we're going to go ahead and hear about the team uh, by Dr. Sara Jimenez. She's going to introduce everyone who's part of this project. Hi, Dr. Carisal Dukes. Thank you so much for having us here uh, to present this information. I'm going to go ahead and introduce the team to you, but first I'm going to introduce myself. I'm Dr. Sarah Ivan Jimenez, and I'm a registered nurse. I've been a registered nurse for 23 years now, and I teach nursing at the University of Texas at El Paso. I'm also a researcher, and I am embarking on a research career in Alzheimer's and dementia, so I'm very excited about that. This topic is really near and dear to my heart. I used to be a caregiver for my parents who both suffered from dementia, and they have since passed on. I knew from that experience just how important it is to, of course, try to find a cure to Alzheimer's and other dementias, but also to somehow provide support for care providers and family members and people living with this disease. In the meantime, while we're searching for a cure to improve their quality of life, and that is really important to me. And so I'm very excited to be participating in this project of journaling and dueling because this is a great way to support everyone affected by uh, dementia and Alzheimer's to just relieve some stress, to gain some clarity, and to just improve their overall quality of life. And that's really what it's all about. I'm going to introduce the amazing members of the team. We have, of course, Dr. Elvira Carizal Dukes, and she is a professor, of course, at UTEP. And she is also one of our dynamic leaders in this project. So it's, it's really great to have her. She's a great writer, a great artist, and it's been amazing to work with her. We also have Ronnie Dukes from Dukes Comics, and he is the co-creator and artist that has designed these amazing comics for people to enjoy and also to learn from. We're also working with Dr. Jacob Martinez, one of my colleagues from the School of Nursing, Dr. Isela Meyer, who is a professor of English at UTEP. Then there's, of course, myself, and we are also working with Ms. Maria Yamas, and as she said earlier, she is our director of programs, and Mr. David Hernandez, who is our executive director, who actually some time back, you know, we brainstormed these ideas, and I'm glad to see it's coming to fruition at this point. So to give you a little background, um, the impetus behind this program was basically to address the need for increasing access to Alzheimer's disease education and resources here in El Paso, Texas, a border community that is also home to Fort Bliss Army Base. It's important to note that we have a lot of different groups in our, our area, 
and Hispanics comprise approximately 82% of the population. This also includes a very large Spanish-speaking segment. Language we have seen is often a barrier to healthcare access and education. And to meet that aim of increasing accessibility for our community, the workshops that we have produced and the comics that we have produced are available in both English and Spanish. Health information about the disease process and common caregiver challenges are provided in each session. A guided journaling and doodling activity is also included. And the reason that we came up with this idea of trying to facilitate journaling and doodling in our activities is that journaling has been shown to be an effective and easy tool to use for stress management. We also know that the use of comics can be a very, very powerful tool to expand educational outreach efforts for improving the health and well-being of people everywhere. And that is another reason why I've incorporated that into our activities. So Dr. Elvira Carizaldux will be introducing the comic of the day, and I will also assist her as we present this. Thank you, Sarah. A huge role that I play with the workshops is to write the comics. And then my husband, Ronnie Dukes, draws them. And we created a series of short comics that illustrate caregivers and their loved ones affected by Alzheimer's and other dementias. What I'll do is I'll read the dialogue in each frame to demonstrate what we would do in our virtual workshops that we've been providing. And also, most recently, we did one in Spanish. What each frame demonstrates is a strategy that's being demonstrated by the caregiver in each situation. Frame one, we see Cruz, the daughter, she's in the background sitting in the living room watching TV. And in the foreground, we see her father who's frantically taking clothes out of his drawers. And he also doesn't look too happy. His face is a little bit squished. Cruz looks up and asks her father, Apa, where are you going? And the father responds sort of loudly, and kind of upset, I'm going to the store. And so what we can see happening here, um, Cruz is a daughter, she's a family member, she's also a care provider for her dad. And what we have to do as caregivers is when we're taking care of someone um, we love, our parent, um, whoever that might be, we're going to first assess the situations. So she notices he's getting ready and he's a little bit frantic, a little bit agitated. And so what she's doing is what we teach as a first step. She's detecting what's happening and she's talking to her dad and she's making that connection to find out what he's going to do. And that is when he responds, I'm going to the store, a little bit agitated. And frame number two, we see that Cruz has come into the room closer to her dad. She gently has her hands on his shoulders. And now we see that the father is sort of alert, but a little bit um, sort of shocked or scared, um, maybe a little confused. And so Cruz responds to her father, you have to wear a mask, Appa, because again, this was during the quarantine. The father responds, why? You think I'm contagious? So we can see in this slide something that is very common to people who are living with Alzheimer's or other dementias. It is very easy for them to become agitated, to become suspicious when a family member is asking them almost any kind of question they may get extremely suspicious, get agitated. This is something that we commonly see. And definitely during that time of COVID, when we're trying to explain to our loved ones, um, to the people we're taking care of, what is happening with COVID-19 and the precautions it was very challenging for the care providers. Um, but what she's doing is she's approaching him very gently. We can see that she's maintaining a calm voice. We can tell from the illustration that this is something that is a challenge for her, but she is approaching her dad very calmly and she's thinking about the next step. Frame number three. So now Cruz is further into the room. She's sitting on his bed and, and then we can see from her perspective, uh, the father has pretty much made a mess out of all his drawers. She seems to have gotten his attention. And so she continues speaking with him and says, how about if I go to the store instead? that fishing show you like is on. And the dad looks up and looks at her and says, fine, is there any more coffee? And she responds, yes, I'll get you cafe before I go. And so in this slide, we can see that the dad is feverishly gathering all his clothes together. He's ready to exit the house. 
And one of the challenges here is that during the time of COVID, it was really important to remain quarantined, uh, to keep people from going into contact with other people. Um, there's the challenge too that he's very agitated, trying to leave the house. And so Cruz has to think on her feet and think, well, what can I do to help my dad, to help the situation? Because we don't want him going out um, just like this. And definitely during quarantine, we had to be very careful about people going out. And so she uses a classic strategy of redirecting him. She's redirecting him, changing the topic. As you can see, she's joining him in his reality. She's not arguing with him. She's actually recommending something else that she knows might bring him pleasure. And that way she can control the situation. And so it looks like it actually worked. He gained an interest in that fishing show and she was able to tell him and reassure him when he asked for more coffee that she would definitely get the coffee for him before she goes to the store. So in this case, after she's assessed the situation, uh, she's redirected him, then what she is doing is giving him a reassurance in a way that I'm taking care of things right now. Um, I'm gonna go to the store, I'm gonna get you a coffee. And she's been able to manage the situation and this strategy that she's used to redirect him, the words she used, his reactions, she's able to use this so that when this kind of situation comes up, Again, she can use what she learned was successful in this particular situation. Wonderful. Thank you, Sarah. And finally, in the last frame, we see it's the end of the day. And this is what we recommend for caregivers is to keep a journal and, and just write your thoughts, especially at the end of the day when you have time to yourself. We see here that the daughter, Cruz, she's having a hot cup of tea. Her father at this point has gone to bed and is hopefully having a good night's sleep. And so we see what Cruz is writing. She writes, today, my dad wanted to leave the house in the time of COVID-19. It's a very simple statement, you know, but journaling does not have to be complicated. It could be just a few lines, even if it's just a description of what you did that day. What we're seeing here is very typical for family members, for caregivers. It's one of the most stressful things that you can possibly do, um, taking care of a loved one with Alzheimer's or dementia. It consumes your time. You sometimes don't find a whole lot of time for yourself. But when you do, it's important to take care of yourself and to relieve that stress that you've gone through. What caregivers, care providers, family members sometimes forget because they're so focused on the loved one is that they forget to care for themselves. And we know that consistent stress day after day after day, it, it carries an, an increased risk for that caregiver to, to develop diseases like cancer, cardiovascular illnesses, anxiety, depression. They're at a higher risk for developing these conditions. And so it's important for them to do things that bring them comfort. The time of COVID-19, uh, we're still living through it, but the time that we were all quarantined was especially stressful for care providers because they had to try to explain what was going on and on top of the usual management that they had to do for their loved ones and for those that were living in long-term care facilities, they could not see um, their family members or people that had been taking care of them as far as family members had to stay away. Um, they could not come in to visit because the risk of our older people or people living with Alzheimer's and dementia of developing uh, or contracting COVID-19 and dying from it was so high at the time, but it led to a lot of uh, difficult, stressful emotions. And so what was great about this project that we uh, produced during the COVID period time where we were quarantined was that it gave care providers, family members, another tool they could use to help alleviate that stress. And so it's important for care providers to know that it is very common to feel extremely stressed out. And it's very important for them to know that there are resources out there to help them uh, manage that stress within themselves so they can give the best of themselves to their, their loved ones or the people that they're caring for. Thank you so much, Dr. Jimenez. As far as the art is concerned, we wanted to put Latino characters. And so here we see Latina and she's the daughter and she's taking care of her father. And as we heard Maria Yamas talking about some of the facts and figures, a lot of times caregivers end up being the daughters of the parents. And so we wanted to, to show that through the art. We also wanted to provide multilingual and, and Spanish comics, especially to reach out to the immediate community here in El Paso, Texas. So I'm going to go ahead and have Dr. Isela Meyer uh, introduce the Spanish comics part of our workshop. 
Yes, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Carizal. My name is Isela Meyer, and I'm a professor of rhetoric and writing studies in the English department at UTEP. I also um, can relate to the topic of dementia and Alzheimer's, and I was very fortunate to be invited to work in this project. My mom, who is 93 years old, suffers from dementia, advanced dementia, and not having, not knowing about what to do in situations that were presented and are presented it each time that I visit her or each time that I see her, it would have been very hard for me to comprehend what was going on in her mind and in her world. So having information services projects in Spanish, it makes a lot of sense for me. And it also makes a lot of sense for my sisters whose first language is Spanish. So I think this is an important project that we are doing here. Uh, with that, I want to just um, underscore the importance of having information in Spanish because we are addressing a community community that's primarily Hispanic here in El Paso. We need to prepare information that addresses a multilingual and multicultural and multi-generational Hispanic population. In addition, what we are doing is that we're trying to put together a children's perspective. So what you will be seeing following this is going to be our comics in Spanish. And then in the future, we hope to do something similar, but with a children's perspective in mind. Now Isela's going to go ahead and, and do a comic of the day, this time in Spanish, because as I mentioned, we're providing this workshop in English and Spanish. All right. So this next panel, what you see is uh, um, Cruz, who you can see her, she is wearing uh, a bathrobe. Uh, we could say that she just woke up in the morning and she encounters her dad in the kitchen. And the dad seems to be washing, cleaning, just, just doing uh, some work in the kitchen. And he, she says, Te has levantado temprano, apa. And su apa says, ¿Qué más hay que hacer? ¿Qué más hay que hacer por aquí? So in this situation, by looking at just the comic, we can see that, um, you know, Cruz just woke up and his father is working. But the way that he responds, it seems like he may be agitated that something happened uh, or he seems to not know what's going on. And so uh, we can see in his tone the way he addresses his daughter. And so uh, this following uh, panel is about, you know, talking to her dad. And uh, she says, Tienes razón, apa. ¿Cómo puedo mejorar la situación? And in this case, what Cruz is doing is trying to uh, make sense of the situation, not only for herself, but also for her father. Her father says, desate de COVID para que pueda hablar con mi hijo. He understands COVID, he understands what's going on, but he wants for the daughter to do away with COVID, to let have this be, be behind them because he really wants to talk to his son. Cruz answers, lo siento, papá. Entiendo que es frustrante estar en cuarentena. Ven, vamos a hacer un video chat con él. Seguro que ya está despierto. So then Cruz is trying to uh, distract him and telling and reassuring him. Come on, dad. You know, I know this is a hard time. Uh, why don't we just sit down and do a video chat with uh, with your son? And that way uh, we can figure out what's going on in his life. We can know. So in, in this case, he she is distracting him. And so now he has something to look forward to. So now Cruz, after a long day, she sits down and starts writing on her journal. She says, querido diario. Hoy hicimos un video chat con mi hermano en el tiempo de COVID. So she's documenting what's going on in her life. And one of the purposes for our workshop is for uh, the caregiver to uh, document or to journal the, the feelings, the information, uh, the emotions that they have gone through in order to better understand the situation. Thank you so much, Dr. Meyer. We're going to go ahead and toss it to Jacob Martinez, who's going to introduce Doodling with Ronnie Dukes. Hi, everyone. My name is Jacob Martinez. I'm an assistant professor with the UTEP School of Nursing uh, with a passion for promoting community health interventions. So naturally, this work that uh, collaborating here with my colleagues is truly a natural fit uh, for what I already do. Um, I, along with my colleagues here, am also a caregiver for my father. And... Um, my role in this venture is to really help and, and introduce 
uh, Mr. Ronnie Dukes was a local artist and again, a, con a co content creator with Dukes Comics and a brilliant content creator for this partnership. I get a chance to talk to our participants who join our sessions and um, translate some of that work in Spanish and be able to say, hey, you know, this is where we start the doodling activity and, and really um, allow that sort of creative space to, to happen and take place. We use doodling as a drawing and scribing, and it involves the creation of spontaneous images. It allows for clarification of thoughts, feelings. It can improve problem solving, allows for emotional release of stressful or even painful experiences. It improves cognitive functioning, it can counteract negative effects of stress, and it really promotes self-healing. And I think the neatest part about this is that whether it's in English or Spanish, whether or not you um, know how to draw, whether or not you are an artist, this really pushes anyone to do it. So, you know, what we really strive for is to get involved and, and get everybody out there that's, that's viewing our workshops to really take some time to doodle. And again, you know, the, the beauty of, is, of this whole thing is that anyone can do it. Here, we're gonna go ahead and demonstrate how we start a dueling uh, activity. Y simplemente sostener el lápiz o pluma firmemente en su lugar. Ahora, Voy a compartir mi pantalla con ustedes y así vamos a dibujar todos juntos. Mientras tomo mi lápiz o pluma a papel, solo voy a andir algunos trazos a líneas básicas. Hacia arriba, abajo, abajo y arriba. Solo para empezar. Estoy pintando en un ángulo. Y esto es porque es cómodo para mi muñeca. Pero si solo quieres ir a línea recta o derecha, hacia arriba, hacia abajo, que está bien. O si quieres ir a la izquierda o derecha, o derecha y izquierda, depende de ti. Esas líneas las hago con mi muñeca lo más que pueda o sea posible. As you guys can see, we start very simple. It's very easy to follow, again, whether it's in English or in Spanish. And again, the whole purpose of this is to doodle. So you don't have to come up with like a huge, like amazing piece of artwork because that's not the expectation. So as you can see, this is um, Mr. Duke's um, finished product from a doodling session that we did. And it is very awesome. I think that, you know, this is again, the opportunity to be able to express what you're feeling. And again, during the time that he was doing and guiding this activity, this is what he came up with. So of course, everybody's um, dueling or drawings come out very different. And um, we also encourage our participants to share their work with us. So we have an actual like, direct line where they can sort of take a screenshot and send it to us, or they can even share their work on social media platforms, whether it be Twitter, Facebook, or whatever their liking is, whoever is joining or participating, and they can share their work using any of these three hashtags, which is journaling for Alzheimer's, dueling for Alzheimer's, and Enzols. I'll go ahead and pass it back to my colleague, Maria Llamas. Thank you everyone for joining us. And going back to sharing the doodling or the journal writing, you can also follow us on social media under Alzheimer's Association West Texas chapter to share your journals or doodles. And if you want more information on our programs and services, you can call us 24 seven at 1-800-272-3900. You can send us an email at westtexas at alzheimer.org or you can visit our website alz.org slash westtexas. Thank you so much, Maria, for helping us to conclude this session. And thank you everyone for sharing a piece of this project that we're all working on and hoping to expand and grow in some way. These are our references and we're happy to share this with anybody um, if you're interested in learning more.